from Austin, Texas. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q covering Dell World 2015. Brought to you by Dell. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at Dell World. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Join my co-host Dave Vellante, founder of wikibon.com. Our next guest is the CEO, founder of Dell Computer, Michael Dell. Welcome back to theCUBE. Great to see you, congratulations, great to see you. Great to be with you guys and, like and uh, great to be here on theCUBE at Dell World. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's the highlight of our show. Tweet everyone, 2.30. I got to say, you know, I'm super impressed. You know, you're 50 years old now and you've been an entrepreneur since your dorm room. You told the story on, your, on the keynote today. And it's inspiring for many entrepreneurs because you know, the ones that win the most in business is when the founders are still around. And you're here for you know, Michael 5.0 version of Dell. I just made that up because you're 50. But you got a spring, you got a vigor, you got all the toys, you got all the nukes, you got all the weapons now. I mean, who is on your radar for competition at this point? You know, what, what's very exciting right now is what's happening in IT. And it's this move of IT from the back office to the front office and the business transformation. And so what I'm very focused on is how do we help all of our customers in that journey? And it's a huge expansion of the, the pool of opportunity of IT. Certainly there are plenty of competitors, plenty of people going after the same uh, opportunities. Not as big as you guys though now. I mean. uh, you, you would be right. <laughs> uh, but uh, we have an incredible set of assets and yeah. people, you know, tremendous talent, resources, reach and, yeah. and breadth across the, the globe to be able to go help our customers address those opportunities. So you said on the stage today you've booked revenue since the founding of Dell of $900 billion. Can we just call it a trillion? Just over, <laughs> over 900 over billion, 900. we're not quite under a trillion, trillion. <laughs> but, I, but I'm, I'm counting, I'm keeping score, I'm telling you. I can tell. We're going to have quite a party <laughs> when, we, when we get to a trillion, so maybe you guys will come and we'll... we'll That's we'll pretty significant. A, yeah. So you're pinching yourself this week, I mean, the Dell world couldn't have been timed any better. I mean, you did the deal last week, so all that discussion happens, a full week for people to digest the EMC, the acquisition news, $67 billion. Now the timing Dell worked out very well. Great buzz here. So what's the conversation like? What are, you, what are the customers saying? Obviously the employees are probably like, man, just my workload just went up. Marius said it's an all-you-can-eat environment <laughs> at Dell for career advancement. All you can eat work. <laughs> there, there's no eat. shortage of things to do. Customers are really energized by this. What I've heard from customers is, wow, you guys are making my life really easy here because you're bringing all this together. You're going to be able to provide us more yeah. of the solutions and not to underestimate the amount of work that we have in, involved here, but we're, yeah. we're, we're very excited. So Michael, my last question to you last year at Dell World was, what would you do if you were Joe Tucci? You know, does Joe t <laughs> you know, talk to you? Does he ask for your advice? <laughs> and say, well, Joe and I talk, I'll just leave it at that. And I, said, I had already started the discussion well, with him at that, that point. So, so I, said, I put words in your mouth and I said, well, he's asking Michael we got the for reaction advice. You well, Michael, we'll just leave it there. So you'd started the discussions already at that point. Take us through what you can share with us now about that. I contacted Joe, I guess it was uh, about a year ago, maybe a little over a year now, and we started a discussion. And, you know, I've known Joe a long time. I knew him before he was at EMC. Mother from another brother. <laughs> no, brother from another mother. Got that brother backwards. from another mother, yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we had this great alliance together for about a decade, and we got that up to about $2 billion on an annual right. basis. And, you know, there was a point where we, we split and decided to go do different things. But we remained friends, and as I started the discussion with him about a year ago, uh, you know, I think we, we both believed and saw, and ultimately the board of EMC uh, you know, believed that this was the best uh, outcome for them. I'm very excited. I think it's a great outcome for our customers, for everyone at Dell, uh, and everyone at EMC. And I think the, the companies are highly complementary, and I think it yeah. creates an absolute enterprise solutions powerhouse. So was the conversation like, hey, Joe, this private thing is pretty good. You know, really like it, you're not spending all your time with the 90s. But <laughs> well, that was certainly part of it. You know, and, and I think that was intriguing to uh, EMC because of the ability, I mean, any, any person involved in running a complicated public company, 
if you think about reimagining the business with a longer term horizon, three years, five years, 10 years, their eyes light up, you know, and, and, and they, they, yeah. they delight in thinking about the things that they can do. And that's the discussion that we've had with so many of the EMC folks and, you know, uh, it's been, it's been Michael, great. Talk about, talk about VMware. I mean, you, you, we've been observing VMware from the front row. I mean, Dave knows that Dick Egan back in the day when he worked at an IDC, and we've been to all the VMworld and EMC worlds. Pat Gelsinger seemed to be like waiting to like unleash his Pat, I, you know, Intel mojo onto VMware, but he felt, it felt to me that he was held back by all the EMC Federation, a lot of partnering, hard to partner. Have you talked to Pat Gelsinger and what's his feeling now? Does he feel like, <laughs> hey, now I'm now running a public company? Uh, what's, what's the vibe with Pat Gelsinger I've talked right to Pat Gelsinger a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. I had him over the house yeah. this weekend really. with his wife and my wife and, you so know. So share, share what's in my, Pat's mind right now. Is he like totally guns blaring right now or he's pumped up? Yeah, you know, I think we, we all see an incredible opportunity here. Now, let me say, first of all, as it relates to VMware, we've been very clear that VMware is going to remain an independent yeah. public company. And one of the first things I did was I contacted the key ecosystem partners and assured them that we're not going to run VMware you know, in some very different way, you know, that we're going to keep the partner network going, we're not going to disadvantage partners, and uh, you know, the, Give them confidence the, in their ecosystem. The basically. relationships that, that those companies have with, e, with, with VMware, we're not going to interrupt those. We, we have no incentive to. Yeah. And, and so that absolutely remains. And that, you know, that's, our, that's our intent. And, and I think they were reassure, you know, reassured to hear that. And you know, VMware, from my perspective, is a very special company. Yeah. I think very talented people. <laughs> I think it has an enormously important role to play in the industry. Yeah. You think about where the world's going with hybrid cloud, software-defined data center, what's going on in virtualization, in you know, AirWatch with mobile device management. I think they're very well positioned. Yeah, Pat's got that Intel DNA, you know, in Moore's Law, Cadence, innovation, focus. And I've known, I've known Pat actually longer than I've known Joe. I, I, I met Pat back in the late 1980s <laughs> when he was it, working for, you know, he was Andy Grove's technical assistant. And, <laughs> and uh, so, you know, the good news is either through, you know, uh, just being around a long time yeah. and the alliance that we had with EMC, we know the team there broadly and have for a long, long time. So last month we had our big event down in New York City and we had a guest on, former Wall Street analyst, Peter Goldmacher, you may remember him. And he said, you know who's the most dangerous company in the business right now of all the traditional guys? And I said, Dell. And he said, yes, you know why? And I said, we talked about it. So because Dell lives on low margins, if Dell can actually increase its software content, it's really going to do some damage in this business. This is the first time I've really heard somebody sort of take that critical analysis, and then of course you make this big announcement. <laughs> so your gross margin is going to go from whatever, high teens, low 20s to mid 30s. Talk about sort of the transformation of your business overnight when this deal goes down. Certainly it's a big move. I mean, I think you know, we, we've been on this journey for some time in, how, in really thinking about how do we address the challenges and opportunities that uh, you know, our customers have. One thing I'll say about the enterprise, I think we built an incredible enterprise business at Dell, and I don't think we necessarily got our due you know, <laughs> relative to the level of investments and innovation that we put forth. Now, who better to help us actually make that a reality than EMC? And so I think the, the combination is incredibly powerful. If you look at what we've done in x86 servers, in web scale infrastructure, hyperscale infrastructure, we're second to none. You combine that with the incredible innovation that EMC has driven in storage across every different variety and type of storage, including software defined, with Pivotal, with RSA, with VMware, with VCE, <laughs> with VirtuStream, this is really an incredible combination, so I, I, I couldn't be more excited. So should we expect that software content to sort of become more integrated, or do you think this federation model is the right approach, or don't know yet? 
I, I believe I do know, so. so uh, well, can you share that with us? <laughs> here's, here's what we see. We have, we have seen some things you know, in our business that are similar to you know, what, what Joe has seen. And that is that it doesn't make sense to just amalgamate everything together. There are unique businesses that have special customers, special uh, ways of, of operating, and y if you just kind of combine them all together, you, you crush them, and it doesn't work well. So I'll take the example of SecureWorks. This is a really incredible business that we've been building at, at Dell. And if, if we, when we acquired SecureWorks five years ago, managed security services, threat intelligence, if we had, acquired that company five years ago and said, okay, all you SecureWorks salespeople, come on over here, and by the way, we want you to sell all this other stuff. <laughs> we just destroyed this little company, right? Instead, it's yeah. growing, you know, it's three times larger, you know, it's, gro it, it's, it's growing at a very fast rate, absolutely top of the Gartner Magic Quadrant. So I think there's a role for incubating these new businesses, as Joe has done very successfully with VMware, with Pivotal, uh, I, I, I think there's a there's a winning model. There's a danger though with the platform. When you have a, when you have an ecosystem, it gets it gets dangerous. I mean VMware, we've always been talked about. You mentioned it earlier. They have an ecosystem that's not EMC too. Right? Sure. So when you have a platform, it's a little bit more delicate, which brings up the kind of the IoT opportunity. You mentioned that you led with that today. Clearly, right out front, <laughs> IoT has a huge opportunity. I mean, you've got a great OEM business that you've built. You probably, don't, probably might not know the numbers, but we were talking about earlier, it's great supply chain expertise. I mean, are you going to get in the sensor making business tied to software? I mean, just a huge opportunity in IoT. Can you share some vision on kind of how that's going to evolve for you guys? Yeah, when, when you think about all these product and service companies going into the digital age, they need sensors, right, and, and data to be able to do that. And we're not going to make everything, right, <laughs> that, 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 that is behind that digital transformation, but there are enormous opportunities. Yeah. I launched our gateway today, yeah. which will collect information from lots of sensors. Uh, back in one of our whisper suites, we've got like five more products coming for the IoT portfolio that we're showing our, our, our very good customers. We do not have- Not yet released no, products. Not yet released. Okay. We have 4,000 OEM customers that work with Dell. We've been in the OEM business for a decade and a half. We're really good at this. And I think you know, the, the IOT opportunity is, is really enormous. And, and it's certainly way, way beyond what you would think of as the traditional IT, demand, you know, IT domain. The, the, these folks are doing all sorts of things that we would never have a way to get at, at those, uh, uh, those opportunities. But they're you know, highly, highly focused, vertical, embedded, so an example would be, you know, if you get go to get your genome sequenced, right? Yeah. Well, there's a there's a Dell in there, and you know, there's a lot Plus of data five being grand to do it. a lot of data <laughs> being collected. Yeah. If you go to the hospital and yeah. you're treated for some complex medical procedure, there's a big machine that's you know, do, clear. doing all these things. Clearly. You know, our engines are behind those. You, know, you think about all the the uh, appliances that are fueling all these new startups. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, huge we're, 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 we're behind that, it's, it's huge. So All the industrial companies putting intelligence embedded in their machines, huge opportunity. So people want answers, you obviously don't have all the answers or aren't in a position to give the answers, but you've given us some guidance here. You're not going to mash VMware into some oracle of infrastructure, you're not going to do that. No. Um, Pivotal IPO comes up all the time. What can you tell us about intentions there or any other IPO activity? Is those, are those things that are, in the, in the works, uh, potential, off the table, what can you share with us? You know, I think EMC has said that there's an intent right. to take Pivotal public, and you know, I, I agree with that. So I, you know, I've spoken with Paul Moritz, I've spoken with Rob Mee, I understand what Cloud Foundry is. Good strategy. This is an incredible asset. Mm -hmm. You know, the Pivotal big data platform, Pivotal Labs, uh, you know, what goes on in Pivotal is, is quite incredible, mm. and I'm looking forward to spending more time with that team. They're on a path to, to uh, you know, an, an IPO, as EMC has said, and I'm, I'm fully supportive of that. Michael, we're getting the break here, I know you got another appointment. Thanks for spending the time. My final question for you, is there one thing that you've learned over the past year, since talking to Joe Tucci, now that you're 
announced the deal, certainly hasn't closed yet, a lot more work to do in nine months from now. But one learning that's been magnified for you personally through this whole process that, that surprised you. Hmm. There's, too, there's too, too many things to, to talk about there. So, you know, uh, it, we've been working and thinking about this for a year. And um, because of the enormity of the project, it wasn't a, a flippant decision, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was a, a very You learn, you get the job done, you get the deal done. You know, carefully yeah. studied decision and, you know, at, Various times, it, yeah. you know, wasn't clear whether it was going to happen or not, but we finally, you know, you know got there, and I, I couldn't be more thrilled. Um, you know, there's a lot of work to do, uh, but absolutely fantastic people. I think the businesses fit together extremely well, and could couldn't be You've more. Been in the computer excited. industry for a long time. You've seen them, the players come and go from Microsoft's growing up through part of that whole computer revolution you were part of. Do you kind of like pinch yourself and go, "Wow, I got all, got all these assets now"? And, do you feel, you know, do you feel have that moment of like, wow? You having more fun now, or when you're in the dorm room? <laughs> oh, this is this is way more fun. Okay. This is way more fun. All right. And, and uh, I haven't had any time to pinch myself. <laughs> right. I'm focused on how do we, how do we, you know, All keep, right. keep growing. Pump for you. <laughs> there it is. Thanks very much, guys. Live with Thanks for having right. We'll be Appreciate right back after the short with Michael Dells here inside the Cube. Uh, getting the hook. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for spending the time and sharing your insights. We'll be right back.